Hey guys, I'm here with you today to talk about three simple tricks to stabilize your blood sugar levels. We know high blood sugar is such a big problem. When sugar molecules go up, they create something called advanced glycation end products or AGEs. These are highly reactive molecules that oxidize or rust our body from the inside out. They damage the endothelial lining, the inner lining of our blood vessels, creating plaque formation, creating uh, you know reduced um, blood perfusion, oxygen perfusion into the, the deep tissues of the body, which increases the risk of getting infections. We know that sugar itself hampers our immune system, so our risk of getting infections goes up. Um, high blood pressure, right, hypertension, all different types of issues like that. We, we all cause mortality goes up when we have higher amounts of blood sugar. So we really need to keep our blood sugar stable. So a couple things that we can do, just simple tricks. Let's say you're at a party, you have a piece of cake, whatever it is, a couple things you can do. Number one, vinegar, right? Drink water with vinegar and almost any kind of vinegar will work. My favorite is apple cider vinegar, but the vinegar has postbiotics in it. For example, apple cider vinegar has acetic acid and enzymes, which help your body digest the food effectively. It helps actually slow the um, transit time in the stomach and allows your body to actually break down that food more effectively and lowers the impact of the sugar, right? Your, your blood sugar doesn't rise as quickly. It's roughly 30, 40% reduction and somewhere around a 20% reduction in the amount of insulin that your body utilizes, right? So great for helping prevent against insulin resistance. So just use vinegar. The sweet spot is again, roughly between one to two tablespoons in the meal, right? So if you were to have water and you put a tablespoon in there, that's great, right? You could put two tablespoons, that's great. Don't do any more than two. You obviously don't want you know, the, the vinegar to burn the back of your throat. You don't want it to obviously cause digestive issues. So don't do too much, but one to two tablespoons typically works great. 30 to 40% reduction in the glycemic impact of the meal. Number two is, let's say you're having, you know, you're having a lot of starch or you're having, let's say, for example, a baked potato, right? Baked potato is very high glycemic. So if you're having your baked potato, you're having steak, vegetables, let's say green beans and a baked potato, eat the protein and the vegetables first. Save the starch for the end. The reason why is research has shown, particularly 2015 study out of Diabetes Care, the Journal of Diabetes Care, showed that it significantly reduced the blood sugar and insulin impact. 30 minutes after the meal, right, they tested blood sugar, it was 29% lower in the people that ate the protein and the veggies first than in the people that ate the starch first, 30 minutes after the meal. Insulin was 30% lower. 60 minutes after the meal, blood sugar was 37% lower and insulin was 40% lower. And then 120, so two hours after the meal, the blood sugar was 17% lower and the insulin was 49% lower. And this makes sense because, you know, the longer that the blood sugar is elevated, the more insulin comes out. So now the, the insulin came out at a higher level blood sugar started going down. So you saw a reduction here to 17 from 37 to 17, but you saw an increase in the amount of insulin, right? Insulin stayed high in the blood for those who ate the carbohydrate first versus the people who ate the protein and the veggies first. So what do we take away from that? To keep insulin sensitive, keep our blood sugar under control, eat your protein and your veggies first before you have any sort of sweets or starches. That's key have some vinegar with it, and now you synergize those benefits. And then number three is movement, okay? So here's what I like to do. If you're gonna have a higher carbohydrate meal, okay, you're at a party, you're having pizza, whatever it is, do some sort of high intensity exercise before you eat the meal. Let's say about, the, the sweet spot's roughly about 10 to 15 minutes before, do, do a bunch of air squats, right? Just go and start doing squats, right? Start doing these. That's working a large muscle group, your legs, your glutes, your quadriceps, your hamstrings. If we start to break down the amount of stored sugar, glycogen that's in our leg muscles, that's gonna create a great storage or a great disposal of sugar that we're taking in from our diet, right? So we burn out on some air squats, okay? Do it until it burns. And then go ahead and you know catch your breath, right? Take a few deep breaths so you produce enough digestive juices. Take your vinegar, right? Eat your protein and veggies first and then consume the meal. 
Now, if you've already eaten the high carbohydrate meal, let's say your belly's full, you've eaten the high carbohydrate meal, don't do air squats, right? You're gonna get a cramp, you're not gonna feel good, you could get nauseous. Then you do something low intensity that takes longer, right? Air squats, you can knock them out in you know two minutes, right? So you just do as many as you can for let's say one to five minutes of air squats, uh, possibly taking rests in between, possibly, um, you know, depending on how much time you have and, and your commitment level. And that's great before the work, before the meal. After the meal, we don't want to do that. Instead, we do something low intensity, like take a walk, right? Go out for a 30 minute walk, 20 minute walk, walk around your neighborhood. Getting that low intensity movement is not going to disrupt what's happening in your digestive system, but it's going to help your body burn the sugar, reduce the amount of sugar and insulin that's in your blood and keep inflammation under control. So those are the three tricks. Vinegar, eat protein first, and then getting the right type of movement. One bonus is MCT oil. Just adding a little bit of MCT oil in a higher carbohydrate meal, particularly a C8 only MCT oil. Okay, my favorite is our brand called Keto Brain. That C8 only turns right into ketones, has been shown to lower the blood sugar response, lower the insulin response, and allow you to have you know, less of a glycemic impact by the meal that you're consuming. So just taking a little bit of MCT oil can also be a really, really great trick here. So now you guys have the strategies. Obviously, you can just do one of them, right? And that's gonna work a lot better than doing nothing. But if you stack these, that is gonna give you the best benefit to where your body's able to keep your blood sugar stable, your insulin stable. You're able to stay in a fat burning mode, keeping inflammation under control so you can really thrive in life. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of today's training. Be sure to pound that like button, right? Hit that, share this video with somebody that you know and that you care about and subscribe to our channel so you never miss one of these trainings. Thanks so much and we'll see you in a future video. Be blessed.